Good morning children. This is A. Manoj Kumar, working in Oxford High School, Upugunduru. Now I will introduce a new chapter that is Biosphere. Up to now, we discussed about Lithosphere, Hydrosphere, Atmosphere. These three lessons we discussed. Now we are going to discuss about Biosphere. Biosphere is nothing but a life. It is related to life. Life is existed on earth. By using the hydrosphere, lithosphere, atmosphere, life is existed on earth. Isn't it or not? So, earth is a unique planet because life is existed on the earth. If you see another planets, there is no possibility to exist life. But in our mother earth, life is existed. We are able to see a little bit microorganisms then big animals, then big banyan trees, then elephants, what not, birds, then fishes, everything we are able to see in biosphere. But these kind of things, we are not able to see any kind of planet. So that we can say, Earth is a unique planet. Do you understand? Then only I will tell. So the Earth is unique planet, life thriving on it. Thriving means existed, surviving on it. It has inhabited by countless form of life. Inhabited means, so here, so many like microorganisms, bacteria, great banyan trees, everything surviving. Okay, na? inhabited means surviving by bacteria, great banyan trees and animals like elephants, tigers and blue whales and of course human beings. So, everything we are able to see on earth. That's why Earth is a unique planet. The fact that the Earth has a combination of land, air and water. Land, air and water. Without these three, human survival is not possible. Okay, na? Then, according to the geographers, then life itself constitutes a separate sphere called biosphere. For geographers, they separated the life then they given the name biosphere. Do you understand? Already we discussed about lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere. All forms of life have integral connection with land, water, air and sunshine around with them. That means, so everything is interconnected. We are using land, we are using air, we are using water, we are using sunshine. By using that one, we are surviving. Isn't it or not? Everything interconnected. Without those help, okay, na? human beings won't survive on earth. Various forms of life are not only related to the three spheres around them, but also to each other. That means, apart from these three, each other dependency is also very important. Human beings dependency on animals, animals dependency on human beings, animals dependency on trees, then such a dependency also vital on the earth. Do you understand? Then the primary food producers are the plants. You know very well. Without taking the help of the human beings, plants itself grow. Okay, na? Then plants taking the sunlight and making the food, preparing the food. You know regarding the photosynthesis. Okay. The primary food producers are the plants which produce food with the help of sunlight. Do you understand? Then the plants themselves draw their vital nutrients from the soil, especially from the organic compounds formed due to the decay of the plants and animals. After some time, trees, some trees will then die. That means somebody will cut the trees, then whenever earthquakes will come. Then deep inside of the earth, trees will go. Then some animals will die. Then these animals and trees decomposed. That means mixing with the soil. Then nutrients, okay now. Then nutrients, survive, that means existed on the earth. These nutrients are vital for growing the trees. Do you understand? Okay. Then, the food produced by the plants are eaten by animals, usually called herbivores. Herbivores, very very important, remember that one. The food produced by the plants are eaten by animals, usually called herbivores. 
we have herbivores carnivores omnivores okay na so herbivores means the food produced by the plants or eaten by animals for example elephants okay na then deer then goats these animals eating the plants and growing up isn't it or not and surviving so these animals called as herbivorous animals plant eating animals like deer cattle goats elephants etc do you understand you have clarity in this regard okay living beings like dogs cat cats fishes then birds tigers etc eat the flesh of herbivores so these animals called as carnivores okay na those animals eat both animals and plants that is omnivores okay so differentiation you try to understand herbivores carnivores omnivores okay deer then uh, goat these are the exa- yeah, elephant these are the examples for yes herbivores then uh, living beings like dogs cat fishes birds these are the carnivorous animals then uh, human beings omnivores isn't it or not so try to understand the difference bacteria and fungi help in decomposition of dead trees and animals how dead trees and animals decomposing with the help of the bacteria these dead animals and trees are decomposing and mixing with the soil and nutrients okay prepared in that part okay these nutrients using the trees for growing purpose isn't it or not that nutrients are vital for growing a tree such a way one chain system we have been observing here that chain system is very important but nowadays what is happening we are seeing so many areas okay na industries are established these industries they are releasing the waste water this waste water contains poisonous okay chemicals especially some industries releasing poisonous chemicals which is uh, having mercury okay this mercury so finally that means this poisonous water finally mixing in the rivers canals there microorganisms which are very important for fishes so these microorganisms taking the mercury content then whenever these fishes uh, taking the microorganisms then uh, this mercury content going inside of the fish whenever human beings uh, taking the fishes this uh, mercury component again okay so going inside of the human beings body then it make then uh, so uh, it troubles the human beings that mercury surely troubles the human beings then uh, some diseases will occur such a way nowadays some bad things are occurring why such kind of bad things are occurring then due to the activities of the human beings that means we are cutting the chain so this chain is very important hydrosphere biosphere then atmosphere then okay na so lithosphere this interconnection is important but nowadays people are cutting the interconnection they are damaging the interconnection if we try to damage the interconnection automatically negative impacts will takes place i will give another example 20 years back if you go anywhere in india if you visit any village then vultures are very common but now vultures are not appearing so vultures disappeared why vultures disappeared that is my question yes sir nowadays we are not able to see the vultures e- even now eagles are not appearing sir not flying in the sky sir we are not able to see why such kind of things are happening that means the chain is something some somewhere else it is damaging isn't it or not so the main cause human beings okay na regarding vultures what happened to vultures then especially these vultures uh, taking the dead body flesh isn't it or not so especially these vultures are taking the so buffalo's flesh some villages especially whenever buffalo dead 
then uh, these uh, car cars they are throwing outside of that village early a uh, 20 years back then uh, so many buffalo rarers they used diclofenac medicine for one kind of disease attacked to buffaloes by that time they used which medicine diclofenac that is very very dangerous uh, medicine diclofenac even buffalo dies then it uh, remains uh, so many hours then whenever these vultures take the diclo uh, that means uh, that the dead body that he eats the dead body then uh, that diclofenac enters the body of the vulture then it damages the kidneys of the vultures such a way thousands of vultures died okay na so such a way that diclofenac so is a dangerous medicine drug isn't it or not so who made this uh, diclofenac who injected the diclofenac human beings injected to buffaloes then finally so due to the diseases then uh, the buffalo died this buffalo body then thrown into the outside that dead body eaten by the vulture that vulture then uh, kidneys damaged such a way nowadays vultures disappear okay na then how these uh, human uh, dead bodies that means uh, uh, these buffalo bodies or else uh, something some animal bodies how it will okay decompose tell me okay we are damaging the balance balance is very important okay then especially some trees eaten by some kind of birds if that tree is not eaten by that bird automatically that tree damages the another tree then so some point at some point those trees will disappear okay na that that's why human being should maintain the balance between the spheres it is our primary okay na requirement to maintain the balance among the spheres okay na this is all introduction point about the biosphere everybody understood regarding the biosphere introduction part once you open your textbook and read out the biosphere introduction part here we have to discuss regarding the environmental crisis i have to forget to say environmental crisis that also i will touch here just now regarding the balance okay imbalance i stressed okay na due to the imbalance what is happening so some damage occurring on the earth that imbalance is called as environmental crisis okay na environmental crisis if environmental crisis occurs repeatedly then at some point human beings also disappears remember that one so trees are very important okay then plants are that means uh, animals are very important everything is very important on the globe okay then balance is very important the chain system is very important so that perfect chain system won't create the environmental crisis okay so if we are not maintaining the proper not chain system okay that is environmental crisis we are not maintaining the proper chain system that is environmental crisis do you understand regarding that open your textbook and uh, so read out the introduction part regarding the biosphere okay up to now i explain you about introduction part of biosphere now i'm going to explain natural vegetation in your textbook after introduction part natural natural vegetation given based on then uh, trees cover generally it is classified into three broad categories see natural vegetation generally classified into how many broad categories three broad categories forest then moderate forest then moderate forest in the sense so there is no thick forest cover then dry forest okay see forest in areas of sufficient rainfall and sunshine where sufficient rainfall is uh, then uh, falling that is in that place generally we are able to see the forest grasslands in regions of moderate rains then uh, grasslands are growing then sh shrubs in dry dry regions then which kind of vegetation we are able to observe shrubs okay such a way they classified in very cold regions we have we are able to see we are able to find which kind of vegetation 
tundra vegetation okay na so consisting of small shrubs moss and lichens okay tundra vegetation consists of then shrubs moss and lichens so let us study these things in very detail okay then as you may remember there are different kinds of forest depending upon the climate of the place isn't it or not depending upon the climate of the place generally this classification we make okay first of all i will explain you about the tropical evergreen forest you tell me the name itself indicates tropical evergreen forest means where we can find these kinds of forest tell me in tropical regions that means the pla the places near the tropics then we are able to find these kind of forest tropical evergreen forest for example you see this is equator this is tropic of cancer this is tropic of capricorn <coughs> this area is called as tropical area isn't it or not tropical tropical so here we are able to find which kind of forest tropical evergreen forest why we are able to find a tropical evergreen forest in these regions so here equator passes middle of the globe okay now due to the hot conditions every day okay here rain is falling throughout the year every day rain is falling so that such kind of forests are common in these parts see these forests are also called as tropical rain forests tropical rain forests in the sense rain is falling every day throughout the year then we can say tropical rain forests okay na these thick forests occur in the regions near the equator and close to the tropics so where we are observe such kind of vegetation near the trop near the equator and close to the tropics we are able to see such kind of rain forest the rain forest also called as tropical evergreen forest evergreen means then throughout the year these trees appears greenery okay na then see these regions are hot and receive heavy rainfall throughout the year as there is no particular dry season especially in the tropical region there is no particular dry season the the trees do not shed their leaves all together okay na then every time these trees covered with the green leaves okay so that's why this is called evergreen as there is no particular dry season the trees do not shed their leaves all together this is the reason they are called evergreen if the condition is dry then by that time trees what they will do these trees shed their leaves but here there is no particular dry season that's why these trees unable to shed their leaves okay now always bearing with green leaves that's why the name mentioned evergreen i think everybody understood why the name evergreen given okay na then see the thick canopy as of the closely spaced trees do not allow the sunlight to penetrate inside the forest which kind of trees we are observe here canopy as trees these canopy as trees covering the total space total area even these canopy as trees won't allow the sunlight to penetrate inside of the okay na trees to penetrate through the trees then the sunlight won't reach the ground level okay so the thick canopy as of the closely spaced trees do not allow the sunlight to penetrate inside the forest even in the day time okay na even in the day time if you go into the forest then so it may be dark it looks like dark because this canopy as trees won't allow the sunlight okay na then stopping the sunlight hardwood trees like rosewood ebony mahogany are common here so the examples are very important rosewood ebony 
mahogany these kind of trees common in a tropical evergreen forest okay na so first of all what i explain you natural vegetation natural vegetation classified into three broad categories forest cover the areas which receives heavy rainfalls generally they forests are develops then moderate where moderate rainfall is occurring there which kind of vegetation we are able to observe grasslands in the dry regions then we are able to observe then little bit of uh, trees okay then if you go to the cold regions we are able to observe which kind of vegetation so tundra vegetation we are able to observe then shrubs leeches such kind of trees are growing in uh, tundra region then in detail we are uh, discussing in this uh, part those are first one is tropical evergreen forest these tropical evergreen forests are developing okay adjacent to equatorial region okay na these forests we are able to find always these trees covered with uh, green uh, that means uh, green leaves especially if you take uh, canopy of trees these canopy of trees won't allow the sunlight to penetrate inside of the forest so that uh, okay so there is no possibility to enter the sunlight uh, inside of the forest always it is look like uh, dark there is no particular dry season that's why these trees unable to shed their leaves so that the trees always bearing with green leaves that's why the evergreen name given so then examples for this forest ebony mahogany rosewood trees are growing in this part so these are the very important points in tropical evergreen forest okay